Everybody wants to know what I would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know. Imagine making a difference. No, imagine being the difference. The difference between I can't and I can or I won't and I will. The reason someone chooses to wake up and strive for greatness. In life, it can feel like everything is working against you. Let's defy all odds and break generational curses. This is Overstepping Poverty with Daquan and Zacchaeus. Welcome back to Overstepping Poverty, the podcast that provides you with tips, tricks, and hacks in overstepping poverty. My name is Daquan Brooks, and I'm here with my co-host, Zacchaeus Shaw. How you doing, Zacchaeus? I'm doing good, brother. As you know, another day to sit and talk with a great individual that I've been able to get to know over the last couple of years, really. Can you introduce who we're having today? Absolutely. We have the Tony Gucci. He has inspired so many people. He Cuts hair, obviously. He ensures that a lot of people are wearing their best look daily. And while he's doing that, I mean, he's also implementing a lot of himself into, of course, the community, whether it's just giving haircuts or, of course, inspiring people outside of his shop. So we have Tony Gucci here. How are you doing today, Tony? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me here. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, just got out of the gym, feeling good right now. (laughs) Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got that workout in. I love it. You know, just upper body day today. (laughs) Hey, getting them them in. Don't skip leg days, kids. (laughs) Right. You know what I mean? (laughs) So you're just getting back from Arizona? Arizona. How was your trip, man? Man, it was nice, man. Like, we went to Arizona, and then, like, two days later, we ended up going to Mexico for a few nights. Dang. Yeah, it was nice. Like, my whole plan was to go there in jet ski. That was, like, my main reason yeah. for going there, you know? Jet skis was there the first day we got there. And we're like, ah, let's just save it for tomorrow. We got a full day. And then tomorrow comes by, and it was so windy. The, like, the oh. days that we stayed there were so windy. The waves, the current was just, like, so big. They weren't around. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, overall, though, like... How was Mexico? It was needed. It was needed. Mexico was good. The food, I gained like four pounds. <laughs> and I had a hard time gaining weight, bro. So, like, that was dope. That means but, it uh, was a good vacation. It was, gaining bro. weight. Man, eat, sleep, wake up, repeat. You know what I'm saying? With the guys? With the guys. Yeah, it was, it. Yeah, it was, it was nice. A bunch of hardworking guys. I'm sure it's tough to get out and do that stuff with all you guys at it the is, same time. It is, especially, like, at the same time, like you said. Yeah, no. But we made it happen. We planned this out, like, a month or two in advance. Oh, nice. So, yeah, we made it happen. That's Very dope, nice. man. Very That's nice. dope. Well, I want to get into the interview with you, really, and start to... I know a little bit about you. Obviously, you cut my hair. You saved my life a few times. <laughs> but I want to know more about Tony, like, where you come from, kind of the things that you've been through to get you to the point you're at today and then we'll dive into some more stuff for sure yeah well my name is tony like they said born and raised in ethiopia okay okay i moved out here in 2008 when i was 10 years old yeah and i've been living in sioux falls ever since the only time i ever moved away was when i went to school for barber schooling in arizona yeah besides that yeah no i'm I'm OG. Right. You know right. what I mean? Been here for a minute now. <laughs> for a little yeah. while now. Yeah, years, this is man. home now. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. What was it like those first 10 years that you were in Ethiopia? Can you take us back to that? Something that I get interested in whenever we talk and I'm getting my hair cut is when you talk about the differences between Ethiopia and the lifestyle there and the lifestyle here in America. No, yeah, for sure. Uh, what are some of those differences that you Well, like I was there? a kid. When I was out there, so, like, right. I can't really compare it a lot with sure. the U.S. right now. But, like, I could definitely compare myself to the 10-year-olds here. Right. And it's like, I did a lot, you know what I'm saying, in those right. 10 years compared to what the kids here are doing now. Like, you can't even leave a kid at, a, at their house by themselves. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. Legally, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. like, I used to run the streets when, <laughs> when right. I was standing over there. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But uh, flexibility and, like, just having... The things that you you need or you want is right. just so easier to get here than it is over there. You know what I mean? Okay. What are some of the values that you would say are different between the lifestyles that you've seen? Because have you, have you gone back to Ethiopia since? For me, the thing that stands out the most is family time. Because everybody, like besides like my siblings and my mom, yeah, like everyone that I call family, they're still back home. So like, it's always like a different vibe and like a mm. different feeling. Like whenever I do go back home compared to here, you know, right? Yep. Here is like. 
work, 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 bro. Like, it's crazy. Like, yeah, you got to make it. You got to grind, you know what I mean? But it's, you got to step back sometimes, just right. take a little break, take a deep breath. You know what I'm saying? It's funny that you say that where you see here the two differences. Like, back at home, a lot of people value that family time, and that's what they set their importance on, their day around, their family. And then you get to America. I mean, this is what they say is the American dream. Mm -hmm. Well, when you get to America, all it is based off of work, that where you're going to make the next dollar. And we've had another guest on here, and she actually said that her grandpa told her the motto in America is go work every day, get sick, mm -hmm. and then die. Is that the same kind of motto that you see, you know, the difference it, between it, Ethiopia? It and really here? is. But this is the thing, though. It's like when people come from, like, America and they go back home to visit, they make it seem like it's easy over here. You know what I'm trying to say? So, like, right now, my family, not necessarily my family, but, like, everybody's family that, that have relatives here or whatever. Yeah. They expect you to, whether it's money and whatnot, they expect you to help out a lot. They think, like, we just get it like that. They don't know. Right. We have to work at least eight hours, five days a week. You know what I'm saying? They don't know that we have bills. Like, our bill is actually pretty expensive out right. here. You know right. what I mean? Those are, like, the things that, like, to this day, like, I'm like, bro, why do you guys act like you got something you don't have? You know, when you go back and teaching these people and, like, getting them used to something they shouldn't be getting used to. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yep. Like, with me right now, it's different. Like, I tell my family straight up, I'm like, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't like, got not it. today. Yeah, not today. You know right. what I mean? It's hard out here, especially bet, when yeah. you're trying to grow. I know you have goals and stuff that you want to exactly. do for, exactly. for yourself. And that... At the end of the day, that is only going to help everybody else. You know, you know what I'm saying? If I can't help myself, I can't help you. So, like, you're just going to either have to be patient with me or, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Right. That's, Absolutely. Yeah. That's how it's got to be. Speaking on work, obviously, we introduced introduced you and your profession. You're a barber. Your barbershop name is Gucci Cuts. Gucci uh, Cuts. And you're out of the lab by Naomi, and that's yep. on 41st Street. I'm sure you've, of course, helped a lot of people around the community make sure that they look good, look For nice. Sure. I want to talk about just kind of in the work atmosphere itself. What exactly inspired you to become a barber? Well, like one thing about me, like I've always, I'm a hard worker. Like I ain't got to hear that from anybody else. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And I've always had a job. I don't want to just sit around and get free handouts or whatnot. I didn't want to work for a company that didn't care about me. And like when COVID came, that's when it really like opened my eyes. Cause I was already cutting hair, like, here and there out of my house, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yep. as nothing serious. It was never like, a, I think it's going to be a career, you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. COVID came around, I was working at a job, and, like, when it first came out, you guys remember, it was scary, like, everybody right. was, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to take it light, but I know, you know what I mean? Right, you never know. Yeah, I mean, for it, some of us, it was the first pandemic, pandemic that exactly. we've ever gone through. Yeah, exactly. You know? And I just didn't like how my employers, like, the yeah. job that I was working at, I didn't like how they handled it. Mm. Like, I was like, yo, because when I started golfing a little bit, like, yo, I'm going to stay home. <laughs> right. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. They, yep. they told us stay home. Facts. That was the... And it was just like, but they didn't care. They're just like, yo, put on a mask. I'm like, bruh. Right. Where you know were you working mm -hmm. at the time? I was working at CCL Label. Okay. Yeah, CCL Label. It was a cool job. You know what I'm saying? I did what I had to do. That's when I, like, I really just got motivated to just go 100% into this. Jump in. Yeah, it. I literally just, like, I... I woke up, like, the next day, bro. I was just like, yo, I won't be in no more. <laughs> you know right, what I'm yeah. saying? How I started barbering was because of YouTube. Yeah. And that was the job before that, like, between the right. CCL label and the job before I had. That's when I really, like, got into it. I started watching tutorials and all of that. Right. And, yeah, after the pandemic hit, it was like, yeah, I got to do this 100%. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just went on my Snapchat. I posted on my story. It was like, yo, if y'all need a cut. Let me know. I got these time slots available. Out the house. Out the house. And I was actually doing a lot of house calls because okay, when COVID came, it was like my mom, you know what I'm saying? I was with the fam. And then yep. like I didn't want to bring random people coming into the crib and all of that. So it was like only house calls. You know what I'm saying? Even that, it was only for $30, bro. Right. That's crazy. Yeah, traveling barber for exactly. 30 bucks. For that's $30. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man. Yeah. But you'd be surprised when some people still try to play you. I'm like, bro. I'm not here for the money. I'm here for the knowledge. Like, right. I don't care Facts. about your $30, but you're going to want me later down the road. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I think you told me, or I heard it just recently, if you're not willing to work for under the value, you'll never be paid for Never, bro. Value. And I tell this to everybody, like, that wants to start this barber career. Like, they see me, and all they say is, oh, you making that bread, huh? I'm like, bro, 
don't ignore the five, seven years that I went through to get to where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And the thing is so easy. Like they can just go ahead and do what I'm doing. Like I'll show you all the tricks, all the knowledge I have. Right. But in, until you have that same drive, you're not going to be successful. Like if money is all you're looking at, especially as, cause I could talk about barbering. That's my field. You know? Right, yeah. If money is what you're focused on, you won't make it, bro. I Man. promise you. Mm-hmm. Man. You can have a one-time client that's going to pay you $100. And that's it. $100, you can spend that the moment you walk out the house. You Man. know what I'm saying? It or you want to have, me. exactly. Or do you want to have people that's going to keep coming back, keep bringing more people right. to you? You know what I'm right. saying? And that's what my goal is. And that's why relationships are so valuable. Yeah, for because sure. Because especially in the career that career field that you're in, as you're building these relationships, the client comes second. The relationship comes first. Facts. Because obviously those clients and whatnot – as they continue to get their haircuts and whatnot, and they wear, I mean, you, you're, that's your product itself. Cause they're, when they go to their job or whatever career field that they're going to, everyone's like, oh my gosh, you got a fresh cut. You know, oh, where'd you get that cut from? Exactly. And then they're like Gucci. And then it doesn't stop there. I was going to say, you know? it's like, they're going to keep going. Stop. Exactly. And yeah. then they're, they're like, yeah, man, it was a great time. I was sitting there getting a haircut and it, everything just seems so easy. Everything yeah. seems so fluent because that's the person you are so easy to talk. You're so easy to talk to. You're so easy to be relatable yep. with. And that really is what continues to build a business for sure and that's exactly why i've seen your success i mean because you're that guy you're him (laughs) thank you thank you thank you (laughs) so i want to back up a little bit and tell us about that path of going to arizona going to barber school and getting that so that when you did come back here it was almost like you had a plan i did so well you guys know they had naomi on here before naomi She's the owner of the lab. Shout out. Yeah. During that time, takes us back to the pandemic time. She hit me up. She had a short hair that, that time too. She hit me up. She's like, yo, let me get a taper. And it was just word of mouth. I don't even know. Naomi. I've never met Naomi. I've heard mm-hmm. of Naomi, but I've never met her. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But she just hit me up on Snap. I don't even know how I got her on Snapchat. She's just like, yo, I need a haircut. I'm like, for sure. I got this opening. Made it happen. This was when she was at the old shop before she got hers. I gave her a haircut and we're just talking and everything. She's like, hey, what do you think about joining the lab? And this was a la- before the lab was even a thing. You know, right. she already had this. So I'm like, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, give me a year. I'm going to go get this license. You know what I'm saying? For right. me, it was, I already had that mindset of going to school and getting my license. Right. But her just having a place to go right after and like that guarantee, it was just like the last straw I needed to just make me, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yep. And it was like two, three weeks later after that, maybe I got up. There was nothing that was going to stop me. You know what I'm saying? Like I was right. willing to stay in my car if I had to. But it was like, yeah, I'm going to go get this license. I didn't even apply for the school when I went out there, bro. Really? I literally just drove out there. Me and my boy Sammy, shout out Sammy, he helped me drive out there. We got there Sunday. Yeah. His flight was Monday. I dropped him off at the airport, Phoenix airport, and I went straight to the barber school that I was looking at. I was like, yo, what's up? You know what I'm saying? And for me, it was the confidence that I have. Like, I walk in there and I'm seeing some of the works. I'm not talking shit about the other students or anything. I'm just like, bro, like, I'm really ahead of my game. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? That's when, like... It really kicked in. Like, I got something going on. You know what I mean? And that gave you confidence? You that gave, like? bro, man, right away, bro. Like, it was, right. yep. yeah. Yep. It's hard to be aware of how good you are at something and, until you go see. comparing it. Exactly, bro. Things. And it's not like I'm saying I'm better than this and that. It's just like, it just gives you a knowledge of, like, where you're at, where you're standing. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, yeah, it was nice, man. Like, no regrets. Phoenix, man. Like, yeah, it was good. What would you say as a barber? Because when I think of barbers and people that do hair, like, you're on your feet all day. That's the thing, bro. Like, shoes is a big thing. Like, you got to wear something comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like, the other day I wore my Air Forces. Bro, I was ready to clock out, bro. Really? Like, I don't, I normally don't feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Dang. But, yeah, like, shoes is a very big thing. But when you're having fun, time just goes. Because yeah. you got to think about it this way. Like, a haircut, let's just say a haircut and a beard on somebody will take me an hour. Right. Mm-hmm. Me focusing on your hair, like, I'm not looking at the time. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? By the right. time I'm yeah. done with you, it's like already an hour gone. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. On to the next. Exactly. And I have my break where it's like, it kind of divides it right in a half. Oh, during the day. Well, like, my lunch is at 3 o'clock, and after that, I only have, like, about three more hours to work. And right. then within those three hours, that, that just goes by. You know what I'm saying? As yeah. oh, yeah. long as I get the first half 
out of the way, the rest is good. All good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Exactly. And but that's another thing though. It's like people tell me, yo, why are you not available on these days and that? It's like, bro, I'm not in this for the short term. I'm here for the long run. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to wear myself out. I don't want to get tired of cutting hair. That's why like I don't overwork my body. Right. Because I've seen it on older barbers. They'll tell you like, oh, I got back problems. I got right. wrist problems. I don't want that. And they tell you like I'm a hard worker. I cut 15 heads a day. I'm like, bro. You can do half of that with the better quality cuts. And you know what I'm saying? More. Exactly. And charge more and get the same outcome. Right. Or you can keep rushing and give half ass job. Was that the thought behind going from just walk-ins to appointments? Because I feel like that was a big change, too. It was. Well, the appointments was always going to be a thing. It was The walk-in for me was because it was the beginning of, like, my professional, like, you know, with my license yep. and everything. And me being in a shop. Right. So I wanted people to, like, stop by, get a cut. Like, that's the sacrifice you got to make sometimes. Right. That three, four months where I had to work, skipping my lunch and all of that, is the reason why I'm booked out a week and a half, two weeks in advance. Man, from that's facts. And that's a blessing. Though, yeah, too, it's a blessing, you bro. you raise prices, everything. I think yeah. people are afraid of charging what they should charge for something. Nah, you can't. Like, you got to know your worth. That's one thing I tell people. You got to know your worth. Like... I'm going to come support you if you're going to charge me low. Like, that's on you. That's not on me. You got to have a standard for yourself. You got to believe it's worth that. Exactly. There's always going to be someone out there for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot that we do here, especially on this podcast, it's to support our community. It's to continue to build them up. And so what I want to know as, as a barber, where do you see what you're doing impacting in the community around you? Well, even just like, Having the person just feeling different the moment they walk out of my shop is plays a big role outside of the shop. And that's one thing. And like, I know like this summer coming up, like I want to definitely be out there on the streets giving out like free haircuts for the homeless and like the low income family and all that. But one cut at a time, man, like I could only take care of you on my shop. You know what I'm saying? Outside of that, that's up to you. But I hope I'm doing a good impact on, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. A positive impact. I feel like as a barber, you're also a lot of things like a therapist. I mean, I'm you sure are, you bro. hear some crazy I, stuff. I have, in your I have chair, somebody bro. that comes every week. He's like, bro, this, <laughs> this is my therapy. I ain't skipping this. Right. Like, <laughs> For real, he will though. not skip it. Like if there's one person I know will make it to his appointment, it's him. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Shout out to that <laughs> yeah. guy, man. And shout out to you. My boy, Freddie, man. Have a good one, Freddie. Hey, loyal. <laughs> shout yes. out. Yes. Can you kind of narrow it down to like one impact that you've had on a client? I mean, you're kind of a therapist to one yeah. of your clients and whatnot. And that goes a long way because we discuss mental health and how important that is. And one thing as men, it's very tough for us to really upfront and just tell people about our day, to tell people about our hurts um, on that. So can you kind of explain like as far as like one situation? I was going to say, I can actually like think of one right now. There's this, she's an elder lady. You know what I'm saying? She adopted her grandson. Okay. He's a mixed kid. She's a white lady. You know what I mean? And she doesn't have a man in her life. Like, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I believe that's what she said. But uh, she likes to bring her son to me because she sees me as a mentor in a way. Because every time he comes in there, he listens to me differently than how he listens to her. You know what I'm saying? And that's what everybody, too. Like, I'll, I'll probably take your advice closer to me than before it's anybody from my family. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even if my mom, my dad, like, if they were to tell me, like, yo, mm -hmm. don't do this, a different I'd be like, okay. But if you told me, I'd be like, hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. So, like, yeah. she brings him. She's like, I want to keep coming here. And, like, I just, even for, I was like, yo, you don't even have to get a haircut. Just stop by. He can hang out. You yeah, know what I'm right. saying? But that's, that's one person that really stands out to me when you ask me that question. That's amazing. Yeah. That makes that me smile, good. honestly. Yeah, no. That's, that's awesome that is fire man big differences well, i want to start getting into you right so like from my observation of you i see you as somebody that is very selective about the people that you give your energy to for sure very selective about the people that you have around you for the people you do keep in your life and your friends and stuff why are they so important and why do you keep things so tight-knit like that they're not friends. They're family now. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are people that I've met since, literally since 2008, since I moved out here. This is brotherly hood. You know what I'm saying? Right or wrong, like, we're going to correct each other. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you see us, like, the vacation. Every time we go on vacation, we all go together. Mm -hmm. We all do whatever. You know what I'm like saying? Family, so, like, like it's, it's literally yeah. family. Yeah. Like, 
What is it about them, though, them characteristics that some of those guys have that you like to have around you? Because there's people that aren't so tight knit, right? And yeah. there's people that have a, a ton of friends and they do want to get closer to people and have the right people around them. Is there any characteristics you can pinpoint about your family and the people you keep around you that like, is like no, nothing notch? specific, but, you know, like my boy Omar always adding value you know what i'm saying my homies they all we all in different fields yeah. so if i need something i need a cell phone my boy sam you know what i'm saying right i need a crib my boy sammy i need a loan i got you you know what i'm right. saying i need yep. a car i got you since they never did me wrong i don't have any reason not to keep them around me you right. know what i'm saying yep. i give everybody the same opportunity if i never met you i'm gonna meet you with respect it's up to you to lose that respect we've been good you know what i'm saying we ain't never done any, each other any wrong or anything oh yeah so, like, yeah, that's the main reason why I keep them around me. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. That's so powerful to have a tight-knit group like that because, I mean, outside of family, and even with family, you have family at times where they aren't very loyal to you. And that's one thing that we've learned in our life, that just because you're family, I mean, it doesn't mean that that loyalty comes right right mm. behind there. And, mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate for a lot of people. So to have friends that you call family, they're loyalty to you, that they're, you guys have the same understanding, that value is very important. It is. You know, and, and any time that you guys are out in public, you guys are representing each other. So yep. you guys always have each other's back like that as well. So that's very powerful and that's very important to have. So it I really like is. That. It really so. is. You know, just kind of going on to just you as well. I want to know like some of your personal goals that you see, like you're within a year, five years, 10 years, where, where do you see yourself? You see, like I used to be one of those guys that used to try to have a goal and like have somewhere to be at a certain time and whatnot. Sure. Life has taught me like you really can't, you can have a goal, I guess, Yeah. Mm -hmm. but you can't expect that goal. You know what I'm saying? Like life's just going to happen. I don't know what's going right. to happen after I leave this place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, it's just survive the day, get the best out of that day. Like you know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like goals, you can you can end up disappointing yourself at the end. So like, why not just keep doing what you're doing and let things happen for what they are? You know what I right. mean? Because I got to the, the place I am by doing that. I never, ever planned on being a barber. You know, I went right. to college for two years not knowing what I wanted to do. Yeah. Right. And... Now I'm a barber. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So like life has like a funny of working things out. Yep. So it's just like for me right now, I'm just living it easily. Yeah. You Taking know, it one, one step, day at a yeah, time. Yeah, one day yeah. at a time, literally, bro. What yeah. were some of them disappointments then that made you change the way you looked at life in that sense? What was it? I wouldn't say and... I wouldn't say disappointment. Like college could be a disappointment, but it's like when you look back at it and you realize why you went to college, personally I thought it was a waste of time and money, right? But it's like all the people that I've met through college right. all come to me. Daquan, I met him in college. You know what I'm right. saying? And now guess what? He gets a haircut here too, yeah, you know? That's, yep. that's so true. it's just like networking, back to networking. It's like everything has a purpose in life. You know what I mean? Whether you see it right now or not, you're going to see it down the road. If it's not you, somebody close to you going to see it. You know what right. I mean? That's where I'm at right now with that. That's dope. Yeah. That's really it's, cool. it's funny that you say that just about college and how it's a waste of money. I mean, kind of what you said there, yeah. where I have a different perspective on it. And my perspective on it is, you know, as far as the college credits, what that taught me was, I mean, obedience. It gave me the clock in my head that when I wake up, I need to go and do this. I need exactly. to do this. I need to do this. I need to get my work done. That's what that taught me. But what I see that I really paid $60,000 for, it was the networking. Yeah. It was the it was the people, the yeah, individuals bro. that I was able to take not only at college, but have them go with me. I mean, Zacchaeus has been a, a longtime friend of mine, but we didn't really become friends and tight knit until college, you know, you know, right. and now we're both business owners, you know, we own a business together where overstepping poverty is, is something we came up with together to yeah. help the community. So we're continuing to grow in that aspect as well. So I wanted to start getting into a little bit of you and something that I feel like I can relate to just based off of the relationship that I have with my brother. I hear a lot of how involved you are with your brother. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. What is that? Do you take the role as a father figure? Is there a father in the house? Stuff like that. Abe, yeah, Abraham, that's my little brother. You know what I'm saying? He just turned 10 years old not too long ago. Hey, shout out to Abraham. But uh, I am the man of the house, but I'm not going to say I am I play the father role. I play the big brother role. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Got him as part of that, which you could say is a father figure role. But a like, Mentor type. Yeah, I want to keep him straight. You know what I'm saying? Especially because I grew up in the system. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I can understand it better than my mom can. Sure. Okay. Since she grew up back home. And she right. doesn't really know much. Because I remember she was, they were, like, very strict on us for no reason sometimes. Mm-hmm. I don't want that kind of restriction on him. You know what I mean? So, like, right. if I see something, like, that I don't agree with that she's doing, to, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, yo, relax. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, yeah, no, my brother, yeah, for sure, man. That's that's my guy. You what, know what I'm saying? Uh, what are some of the things that you feel are important to, like, help him with understanding as he grows? Especially being here in Sioux Falls. And things have changed from when we were in high school here in Sioux well, Falls for and sure. stuff like that. But. What are some of those things that you really try to point out to him and stuff? It's just teaching him life, bro. Like, as much as I, I can, you know what I'm saying? Like, before I I opened, like, uh, my business and whatnot, like, I had more time with him and right. to spend more time and guide him more, you know? But nowadays, it's like our schedule doesn't really work out the same. So, like, I don't spend as much time as I want to. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I got to focus on myself. I got to step back and realize, like, I'm the brother, not the father. I can only do so much, but I still got to keep moving forward with my life, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I like that. And it is hard to sometimes separate those things. It is, man. It really is. Like, I, I sacrificed a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I worked my, my schedule my whole life. I worked around him, you know, like, to make it easier for my mom and whatnot. Right. The first major step I ever did was just leaving to Arizona to get my barber license. It was like... I put all of that aside. I'm like, I'm not letting all any of this stuff just stop me from any, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, I'm going to do this. Like, my mom, Dave, and I was going to Arizona until like a week prior, bro. I was going to ask, did you have support when you were wanting to oh, go yeah. do those things? Yeah, but, and that was, that's like that mindset. That's where that mindset comes in. It was like, if I believe it in myself and I, I see it, yeah, I don't care what you think. You know what I'm trying to say? Obviously, I'm not going to do certain uh, things that's going to get in the way of others. Right. But like, if I know it's for me, I don't need anybody's approval. You know what I'm saying? That's up Man. to you to believe it or not. Like, That's dope. And what they say, they say, is above me. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's important to have that tunnel vision, you especially do, when it comes to bettering yourself. You, you have know? to. Every single episode, I feel like I always come back to this. It's if you aren't good, if you aren't bettering yourself, essentially you're holding people down around you as yeah. well. So the better that you are essentially means the better that people are going to be around you. Exactly. You know, exactly. Um, on that. And kind of getting on to that as well as obviously you've kind of taken that mentor role for your brother. Do you see that feel that you've taken on more mentor roles for other people as well? For sure. Like I don't see as a role or like anything like I don't see it as something I have to do. It's just something I want to do. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Or like it's something that just kind of happens. It's like you're coming to my workplace like. You're not asking me to do anything that I'm not already doing. You know what I'm right, saying? Yep. So, like, for me, it's, it's natural. Like, it just comes to me, and I, I'll do it. I personally don't think it's anything crazy just because I find it so natural. But you're a good yeah. guy. Yeah. But like, for real, though, you want to do genuine stuff, and you're you do. a genuine yeah. person. And it's exactly. a lot about the energy. And, we, again, we have a lot of different talks when, when I'm getting my hair cut, but there's a few that stand out and it is about the energy that you give is what you get back. And, exactly. And, and I'm a big believer things. in that. Yeah. Big I believer. mean, what like you put said, out to the world is what you're going to receive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. And I live by that. Facts. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is a part of our episode where we want to actually open up the questions to us. You know, what questions do you have? Of course, for Zacchaeus questions that you have for me, and this is what we call his round table. So I want you to fire away whatever questions you've been holding on to. Go ahead and let those out. Let it spew. No, for sure. Well, Zacchaeus, I know because they're going, you don't have a kid. I don't. Yeah, I know you have a kid. Like, how are you yeah. finding all the time and how are you like able to manage all of that with what's going on now? Because I know one of your coworkers told me that you, you start working from home now. Yeah, right? I that... do. It depends on the day. Okay. A lot of times. Okay. So like with what I do, I am able to really work from wherever. So some days, if it is something where maybe I have to stay home with my son or maybe there's stuff that I need to get done at the house, I will work at home and get things done and be able to take care of everything. Okay. But at the same time, honestly, it's just finding what works for you. I think a lot of times when you're busy and you're trying to balance things, society has made it and printed into your brain that things have to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. Right. So like getting out of that box that they try to put you in and really finding what works best for you and your family. For me, that's going to be making sure that there are days or nights that are just for the fam. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Yep. At the same time, there's an understanding 
between my wife and I that at these stages of our lives, a lot of the roles and I don't want to say roles and responsibilities fall on her, but I feel like in parenthood, when the child is a toddler, a baby, stuff like that, they need their mother, I feel like, more than they need their father at for those sure. times. For sure. We look at it and we have an understanding that although I'm there to help and be a father and all those things, her job is to turn him into a boy and my job will be to turn him into oh, a man. man. Yes, sir. Um, So kind of. <laughs> yeah just kind of breaking those things up and finding it's not easy no obviously uh-uh. you know there are arguments or there's miscommunications that happen but going through those it's just a, it's a work in progress for real but that's the type of things that i try to be intentional about so i can make sure that i'm filling everybody's needs right including my own no for sure yeah i only ask that because uh like outside of work i ain't gonna lie to you i feel like i don't have time to do anything else you know what i'm yeah. saying like Especially now that I've been going consistently to the gym, like starting early, early on like six, seven o'clock every morning before my shop. And it's like after all of that, I'm just worn out. Like I don't want to do nothing, but just go home and relax. Like I just don't want to be bothered, you know? So like that's why I'm asking because it's like you got a lot on your plate right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I want more. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's just a mindset too. One of our last episodes I talked about how I don't feel like I really became a man until like a year after my son was born. And I think there's a level of, I don't know if I want to call it maturity, but in my case, it was maturity to where I'm looking at things differently. Yeah. Right. And the times that I do have, I would look at it and I was playing video games or I was sitting on my phone. You know, I think people do have the time to do things. And sometimes you go overboard and and that's how you end up crashing. But that's how you learn at the same time. For sure. Everything is a lesson. It's it's all how you want to look at it. Exactly, man. So, yeah, it's been a work in progress. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's a good question. My man, Daquan. Yes. Yes. Thanks for having me to you at your crib. You know what I'm saying? It's a nice little setup he got going on here. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm just curious. Like, yeah, like. Why made you decide this is the spot? You know, like, you got the setup. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I came in here. I thought you did all it is. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> yeah. it was like, it's already here. But, like, what made you just say, like, yo, I got a spot where we could do this. And let's let's just do it. You know what I'm saying? That's a good question. A lot of it, it, it just happened. There's one thing that I pride myself on. And that's if I set my mind to anything, I'm gonna do it. You know? You know? I mean? And so one night I called Zach, Zacchaeus. And I was like, hey, man, we should do a podcast. We start throwing ideas around and whatnot. And I jumped into it fully. I mean, that same night, I ordered all the podcast equipment. And in my mind, I said, listen, this is something that's bigger than just me. This is something that's bigger than us. So I feel like I have to I have to do it. When I told myself that, I was like, all right, well, I'm bought in. I'm bought in no matter what. I'm going to make sure that this does become successful. And our success is based off people who are changing their lives. You know, our success is not off just people viewing our content, giving us likes or anything like that. Our true success comes from seeing people change and better themselves. That's what we, in our opinion, our success is. This used to be a workout room. My bike and my equipment that is over there now, they became (laughs) ornaments, like they say. So things are just hanging off of those. But we turned the rest the space into i mean our podcast area and after that it slowly just continued to grow and as it continued to grow we changed you know as far as what we're going to do and how we're going to move forward but it's only to better that's kind of how it happened i mean a lot of this stuff it wasn't in here it's stuff that we brought and we made it accustomed to our overstepping poverty podcast so right. it's nice everything just came together like yeah. i was like i seen the videos obviously you know what i'm saying like this is my first time here yeah and i'm just here i'm like Hey, yeah, nice little setup going on. You know what I'm saying? So like, this yeah. is nice. It's a process. Yeah. Though. This is I nice. Think that's yeah, one of course. Thing that people, like you said earlier, you how work people your way look at you and they're like, "Damn, like I want to cut hair." You're always booked out. Like I know I can do that because he's doing it. It's mm-hmm. really how people feel. Mm-hmm. And then they don't see the backstage work, and right? All of that. And right. then they're like, "Damn, like oh, I gotta go get licensed. Oh, I gotta go do this. Oh, I might have to go across the country Man. and get." the proper education that I need to come back here and do what I got to do. So taking it one step at a time, like we didn't have the green grass behind you like three episodes, four episodes ago. That's crazy. Like that stuff. When Naomi was on, we didn't have that stuff. You didn't have this with Naomi? Not all of it. No, we might've had just the patch where the the sign is at, but a lot of it just keeps growing and keeps growing. One step at a time. Yeah. And it sparked 
like he really jumped out the window with it. Like that's one thing I noticed about Daquan is like it, not just Daquan, but both of you really like with even with this podcast. Like yeah, we were supposed to do it before I left on my trip, but I told you like yo, yeah. like can we do it after? Like I didn't give you a specific date, but you knew I was off Wednesdays. You right, know, I was yeah. like. Yep. It's almost like you didn't give me an option, which I appreciated because when I have options, I seem to take like the easier way around. I'd be postponing things. Sure. So mm-hmm. when you told me, hey, 2.30 Wednesday, I'm like, God, I'd leave. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, you that's know what? Right. Let me just do it right after gym. So that's why I said like 1, yeah. 1.30. You yep. know what I'm saying? Right. Because yeah. I live on the north yeah. side of town. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I wanted to just come from the west side, come over here. And that's why I said, let's do it a little earlier. I like that though. You know what I'm saying? It tells me like you guys are really about this and like- it's not a joke, you know, because I've had people come to me like, yo, I want to put you on my pad co- podcast and all of that. It's like they don't even have anything set up yet, you right. know, and it's because you mentioned it like one time, I believe, at the shop. And the next yeah. thing I know, y'all are posting videos. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> OK, you know what I'm saying? So man. like, that's dope. That's yep. dope. Man, you got to take action, man. Yes, I sir. Mean, we can discuss it all day. But if we don't take the steps forward, then nothing then is nothing. Exactly. Yeah, nothing's going to That do. was one thing, honestly, for the longest time, I would always hear people talk about like dreamers and dream, you know, and doers and all these things. And I always I dream big. Like I have ideas all the time. I'm like, dang, that would be crazy. And it seemed just so far fetched. But then like, I don't know, it is the people that you get around you that for keep sure. you accountable that are like same can drive change you from being a dreamer to a doer. You know what I mean? And the doers, the ones that actually think of something in their head and then hold it in their hands and they make it themselves. It gives you a completely different mindset and perspective on things like I can make it out of nothing. And that's a salesman, a hustler, the people that just go and get it and get it out the mud. Like those are the people that blaze trails, set things up for themselves and their family and just really change their whole community. Of Their course, because it's not an easy, it's not a handout. Like you work for this, you know what all went into what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So you you, you learn to appreciate it more right. than those that just you know that just got it like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, that's that's key, man. And it comes back to relationships. Too. It does. It's everything. You can really like connect the, everything to everything. You know what yeah. I'm trying to say? Like if you really connected. want to, yeah, yeah, everything is. It's all perspective. Like. You can let the bad affect you or you can look at it another way around. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, what could be worse than this? Mm-hmm. You know, whenever something bad happens to me, I'd be like, yeah, I know this is bad, but could have been worse. Right. Yep. And it's sure. like, yes, it can. So let me just take my, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And then move on. Could always be yeah. worse, right? Exactly. Yep. And also realizing we weren't going to be able to do this on our own. At no, we, we, we all need episodes. each other. Like, you know what I'm saying? You could be good at something, but we all need each other at the end of the day. It takes a community. Mean? Exactly. Do you have any other questions for us? So what is like, you guys are putting like all the local people here and all whatnot, but like, what is the main goal with this yeah. podcast? For me, we could have different ideas, I, I suppose, for sure. on what we for want sure. for it. For me, the whole idea behind the overstepping poverty and having people on, whether they're local, and I would like to get people that aren't just local here for sure. eventually and down the road. But in Sioux Falls specifically, I think there's a lot of people that do nothing but get recognized. And there's a lot of people that actually do things in the community to make it a better place that don't get any recognition. And, and a lot of those people, they don't do it for the recognition, right? But those are the people that are actually in the field, in the streets, helping people grow and making a difference. So I feel like connecting those people with other people that can make other opportunities happen is really the biggest thing for me. It's making this place better. It's bringing people from all backgrounds together so that we can grow and really make Sioux Falls what I think it really can be. And it's it's, it's got, crazy how got crazy potential. Sioux Falls can be, man. man, just with the way the community supports people, the way that we have so many people from different areas of the world coming here based off of immigration, refugees, people just wanting to move here. I think we're at the forefront of what Sioux Falls is going to be. You yeah, know? no, for sure. Um, you can look in the, for sure. For sure. You can look at the in the barber game. And I was with you where you had to turn multiple people away in the same hour. It's a blessing. I don't want to do it, but like what well, you got to know when enough is enough. And that's why I have that appointment set right. up right now. It's like. You're not going to take the time to go set that up. Like, I can't. You know what I'm saying? Right. You won't have my time now. It's, it's a respect thing. And that's where 
we talk about knowing your value. You know what I'm saying? When I did walk-ins, like, I knew I was there. You know what I'm saying? I knew I had potential. I knew, I know what I had, but it's like, the people didn't know yet. You right. know what I'm saying? And yep. I was, that was the thing. It was, Getting the I got to let them know. And then they're going to find out. You know what I'm saying? And it was you, right? It was all me, it man. Was it, was, it was so crazy because, like, it's not really a heard of. Like, you just go from walk, like, walk-ins only to just only appointments. Just like that. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Right. Most barbers, they have, like, one day where they do walk-ins. For me, I was like, nah, bro. That's it. Straight to appointments. Just straight to appointments. I lost some money here and there, like, the first two, three weeks, but I expected it, you know? Yep. Just until it catches on, and then now it's on. Like, I'm the only one on the Cut app, like, in the state right. of, probably in the state of South Dakota, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, I have all these people that are literally downloading this app just because of me. And, like, right. sometimes I sit back, I'm thinking, I'm like, bro. Maybe you should start a own, your own app. For sure, bro. Yeah. Like, I have to, because, uh, no, I have to. Right. It's definitely a thing I'm, an, I'm, I'm definitely been looking at. And That's dope. I like it. What about you, though? Obviously, I mean, I agree with you exactly as far as the community and, and building those connections and pretty much stating, having a platform for people to get recognized. That's our big main goal. But as well as, I mean, just overstepping poverty in itself, what it's formed and what we formed it to do is to, there's one thing that people who fail or continuously fail, it's not because a lot of it's not because that they're just not trying, it's because they have lack of knowledge. And so when they don't have that knowledge and they're not set up to become successful, then they're going to continuously stay in that exact same poverty stricken mindset or poverty level that they're in. So what this is for, it's, it's a platform to show people like, Hey, these are the cues. These are the mindsets. These are the way you should go about your day to become a successful person and not just become successful on the money end of it, but on the, the mind and, yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. once you're successful in the mind, everything else just continues to flow exactly. and you continue to, to grind, you know, that's that it gives you that ambition. At some point you continue to just want more and more. And that's not greedy, it's not. but it is, it's just a mindset that you have. So that's what overstepping poverty like that I see. I want to recognize everybody in the community, but I also want to grow out of the community as well, because there's a lot of valuable information that we have on here that is being hidden to people around the world that I feel like need to see this. And that doesn't mean that we're going to forget, you know, our roots. I mean, Sioux Falls is our roots. This is where we want to combine everybody together. But that also doesn't mean that our table isn't big enough to have everyone outside of Sioux Falls join us as well. So that's kind of what it is for me, like where I see that there. And actually going on to that, where I kind of give my input on overstepping poverty as well as Zacchaeus, I want to know exactly what your mindset is on what, when you hear overstepping poverty, what does that mean to you? For me, it's just breaking the chain in a way, going with your own beliefs in a way, mm-hmm. and then not like the traditional, because we're in different time right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. I mean, we're in 2023, like something that happened in 90, in the nineties, whatever, it's not going to be the same as now. You know what right. I'm saying? Yep. So like for me, when you're saying overstepping poverty, it's like you're breaking that chain, like. Like, I'm going to go do this on my own in a way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go see what's really out there. That's what that's what comes to me. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And, then like, after watching that first episode, like, your story still, like, stuck in my head. I would have never guessed. Uh-huh. The way you carry yourself, I've said this to you before, like, I just would have never guessed it. Yeah. So, right. like, that, you guys got the right name for this, for sure. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? I appreciate it. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Perspective is everything, right? Yeah, man. Like, perspective is all, man. Like, don't let it affect you. What happens, happens. Like, either use that as a lesson or you know what i'm saying or you can use it against you and you use that as a lesson you worked you know what i'm saying yep to fix that absolutely Absolutely. so yeah that's nice i like that i like that mindset i like that your point of view on overstepping poverty it's very positive driven and that's for sure yeah that's what we want you know and if you have any negative (laughs) uh whatever on that (laughs) like you need help you know what i'm saying (laughs) i like that yeah all right so we want to get into the next part of our episode where you give five tips tricks and hacks on exactly kind of who you were as a 16 year old what would you tell yourself that you've learned from the last 13 years or so, what would you tell yourself to better yourself mentally, physically, emotionally as a 16 year old? As a 16 year old, like I was still like what high school then, right? Yeah. yeah. High school. Like I was still living my life. Like I tell people like, just enjoy your, your time. Like as a kid, just enjoy it. Like you come here, you got all this pressure on your back. Like 
you're 16, like, you're, you know, two years after 18, you're going to have to move out on your own. Like, my culture is different. I ain't got to do all of that if I don't want to, really. I don't know if there's anything I would tell myself, like, with the mindset I have now, because I, I'm a big believer in everything happening for a reason. Absolutely. So, like, I feel like if I didn't go through what I went through I, when I was 16, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Sure. You right. know what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. Like, me trying to fix or change something would definitely like mix up all the other stuff that's going on and like i I don't think i'd ever been a ever be a barber because i would have told myself don't go to college like i probably would have told myself you could start skipping school and all of that because like i never started skipping school until college oh okay so like if i have the same mindset i have right now with school like i'll probably you know what i'm saying right yeah so it's a good thing that i it, it went the way it went Right. That's what got me ready to this. I completely agree with that. I want a different perspective on it. And maybe you wouldn't tell yourself this, but there's people out there that want to know exactly how they can be like Tony. And I understand going through the lessons, the failures, that's a blessing. You turn it into a lesson, you know, stuff like that. So what would you tell a 16 year old? Like these are the five tips, tricks and hacks that you can take and utilize to help you grow. Right back to networking. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, focus on the people you're surrounding yourself with. Don't waste your time partying and whatnot. Because all of that will always be around. And don't get peer pressure to do things you don't want to do just because your friends are doing it. Right. That's, that's a lot of things, like, as a kid, like, as a teenager, we, we, like, fall into. You know what I'm saying? For sure. That's definitely one thing I would definitely tell myself. Or, yeah. like, someone at 16. It's like, do what's right and do what you think is right. Follow that instinct. Do you feel like you wasted a lot of time? No, I don't. I actually don't. Like I told you with this mindset I have right now, like I can just reflect back and just forgive myself. Not even forgive myself, but it's like, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And no regrets over here. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Yes. It's a lot of like. What I take from that is just trust in the process. Trust yeah. the trust, process. You know, I tell people. Trust yourself to, and trust the process. I tell people this all the time. Even just when I give them haircut, like when the way I do haircut is different than what most, you know, every barber is different. Like yeah. I like to leave everything until the end because mm-hmm. it gives me a satisfaction when I shave it off and I see the work come together, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Most people are not used to having a haircut like that. Like I'll give them a nice clean taper, right? Yeah, are you going to take that off, bro? You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, trust the process. Yeah, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, like, yep. right back to where it goes. <laughs> yep. Like, the other day, I gave this dude, like, a clean, high taper, and he's, he just, I, I can see him feeling his hair, everything. I'm like, bro, relax. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, just relax. You're not done yet. Yeah, yeah. literally. And I finished it, and I showed He's like, bro, man, I'm coming back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. like, he's yeah. like, whoa, I ain't never had it like this before. I'm like, yeah, bro, you just got to relax. Trust the process. Trust but the yeah, process. for sure. I think the biggest difference I see when I'm sitting in your chair, the attention to detail is one of them. Your service is top notch. I haven't gotten my hair cut by everybody in Sioux Falls, but with the people that I have, like hands down, I think you have the best service. You're most reliable. The conversations are the best. I just appreciate a lot of what you do. Like I said, you saved my life a couple times. Right. With appreciate the y'all too. No, for yeah. real. So, yeah. I appreciate um, you guys too. Because that thing, like, barbers need to understand, bro, you're cutting. Most of the people that are your clients are hardworking people. You know what I'm saying? You're making more than these people. So, like, if they're willing to give you their time and money to come spend it with you, you better do the same. You know what I'm right. saying? Yep. You can't be having no AirPods in your ear while cutting. Right. You know, you shouldn't be answering a phone call unless it's somebody emergency or something. That person is there, and they're your priority right there. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the rule that I go by. And that's why it. your business is successful. And people successful. yeah, and people notice that, too. Every time they come, they're like, bro, man, I appreciate it. Yeah. Like, I have people, like, all heads that don't even do appointments that started doing appointments. Like, they used to come to me when I was doing walk-ins. Yeah. And they went away for a while, and they're like, bro, man, I caved in. I had to come back. Yeah. They're like, I'm doing this app now. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing the appointments. Yep. Because, like, it's one thing. When you've been getting a haircut by somebody that your whole life, mm-hmm. and it's another when you go somewhere else and you get somewhat of a better service, yeah, and a better haircut, and you go back to that barber that you used to go to, and you realize all of that now, right? Because it was a norm for you at one point, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then you go back, you're like, yo, and that was like one thing the dude said. He's like, man, all I'm gonna say is, man, you're clean, bro. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's and I was facts, like, bro, bro, that's that's my big thing. That's facts, bro. Well, there you guys have it. We have Tony Gucci here. Again, his establishment is Gucci Cuts at the lab by Naomi. Definitely book your haircut with him. What is the app again? The Cut. The Cut. The Cut. Book it because they are flying off the table and he's definitely booked up. So 
Again, thank you so much for taking the time to be on Overstep in Poverty, Tony. And thank you guys for listening. Nah, thank you for having me, man. This was a pleasure. It was fun. Definitely going to be doing this. You know what I'm saying? Again, for sure. And it's going to be a whole different upgrade. And I know it. You know what I mean? Trust the process. Trust the process. You feel me? (laughs) Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Overstepping Poverty. We hope you found this week's discussion informative and thought provoking. We know that tackling poverty is a complex issue, but by working together and understanding the root causes, we can make progress towards creating a more equitable society. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe to our show. Until next time, let's take the next steps in overstepping poverty.